This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight with Al Ferguson. This is a special broadcast of the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news, broadcasting live and available on demand on all smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. We encourage you to watch on your home television by downloading the Happening Out Television Network, and you can see all of our programs. It's time to queer up the news. This is the first ever LGBTQ plus news show broadcasting from the Eastern Mediterranean. Our nonprofit 501c3 Travel Club has partnered with Fort Lauderdale's Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church to travel to this vital region of the world, including the three continents of Europe, Africa, and Asia. Nearly 60 people from LGBTQ plus America have traveled with our news show to Egypt, Athens, Cyprus, Rhodes, Mykonos, Santorini, Turkey, and Israel. Just weeks before we left for our broadcast from three continents, the Israel-Gaza war broke out. Queer News Tonight was scheduled to broadcast from Jerusalem, meaning that this LGBTQ plus news broadcast would broadcast back to back from Egypt's Giza pyramids, Israel's holy sites of all three major world religions, and Ephesus. We made some changes and hope to again broadcast from Israel in the future. Hotspots Magazine Happening Out Television Network is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ plus community. Our mission is to support the 10 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform you and educate the key issues of our black community, Latino, lesbians and queer women, trans, students, youth, seniors, HIV AIDS, healthcare, business, social justice and faith. Help us support our community. Queer News Tonight is literally out of the closet and into the headlines. This evening we bring you the news of and a perspective representing the LGBTQ plus community. Our community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast. And here are the bullet points of the Queer News for today, Monday, November 6, 2023. Hello everybody, welcome to Queer News Tonight and this evening we're coming to you from this historic, historic, incredible place. We're in Athens, baby. And this historic broadcast is from the Candia Hotel in the heart of ancient Athens. The Acropolis is right behind us. You see it, Cal? You see it? It's right there. It's right there, look, it's right on your shoulder. We're sitting right, right there. there. Right there, right there, right there, <laughs> right there, right there. Hello everyone, my name is Faye Wood and I am the host of the Faye Wood Show and of course co-anchor of Queer News Tonight. And I'm here with my bestie, you know him, you love him, Cal Gajraj. I was so excited to be here with you, Faye. I haven't slept like in four days. What? I feel Same. incredible. I like, know. look at this, Cal. Like, how did this happen? This how did we end up here? Like, You're I can hardly Greece. breathe. Yeah. Can't wait to see the Greek voice. It's incredible. Can you? I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we are so happy to be here. And uh, let's begin by clearing up politics. New House Speaker Mike Johnson has religious obsession with gay sex and conversion therapy. <sighs> Let's take a breath before we talk about this gentleman. Oh my God, all right. So have you heard about Mike Johnson? All right, well, you should know about him. He is a New House Speaker and he kind of doesn't like our community at all. Let's tell you a couple of things about what this gentleman has been going on, has been up to, okay? So Mike Johnson was Louisiana's representative, okay? He was voted into Speaker of the House, and the relative unknown had virtually no background review before his GOP election, so he got this great appointment, and no one even heard of the dude beforehand. Go figure. Go figure, right? Okay, I got more to tell you, though, Cal, all right? Okay, so I'm here to tell you a little bit of the history, since they just appointed him and didn't even tell anybody what, he was, what he's been up to, all right? So, in early 2000, he appeared in a documentary advocating and embracing gay conversion therapy. Um, to, like, say, yeah. Sink in. like, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, like, that's a good thing. Like, yay, I'm pro. Like, you know, yeah, let's all go to Disney. Yeah, let's all get conversion therapy. You know, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that like, he's into, okay? So then he works for the Alliance Defending Freedom that Southern Poverty Law Center says is a hate group. And I think they're a hate group too. No, they are a hate group. For real. I mean, yeah, anything that stands for that, it's just not, it's not anybody that's full of love, for sure. Um, ADF became the most powerful anti-LGBTQ advisory group in DC during Trump and the top advisors for the GOP on anti-LGBTQ policy. Of course they became the most 
I don't know. Of course they did, yeah. right? He was a major supporter to not certify the Biden election. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes, it was rigged. He was right there with everybody saying that it was rigged, okay? <laughs> In 2005, I got more, Cal. I got there's more. more, but wait, more. there's more. But wait, there's more. Um, okay, so in 2005, he suggested LGBT, LGBTQ people are more likely to participate in pedophilia. Like, this is kind of like the, the hate speech that, that people listen to, when yeah. someone like this says it out loud and proud. Oh, yeah, LGBT. It's the rhetoric. It's the rhetoric. Yeah. It's the rhetoric that kills people in our community, right? And this is the stuff that he's been doing back almost 20 years, okay? Then he advocated for the recriminalization of sexual acts between consenting LGBTQ adults in 2008. Okay, well, there was a time where two same gender loving men, right, would be, if they were caught maybe having some kind of, you know, je ne sais quoi, yeah. right? We asked the wrong language, we're in, Greek, we're in Greeks, but I don't know Greek yet. Give me some time, all right? That they could be arrested for that, you know? And he wants to bring that kind of stuff up, right? right? In 2009, he wrote, it, he wrote in an editorial that the homosexual agenda will destroy Christianity. Yeah. yeah. In that same editorial, as reported by CNN, he said homosexuality is inherently unnatural and dangerous lifestyle that would lead to legalized pedophilia and destroy the entire democratic system. Are we really that powerful? It seems like it. Right? Yeah. I mean, We're such a, a marginalized community. Yes. They give us a lot of power, right? Jeff. I mean, coño. He compared, he compared his natural sex to gay by saying, your race, creed, and sex are what you are, while homosexuality and cross-dressing are things you do. Right? Speaker Johnson is now third in line to being president and is likely the most anti-LGBTQ speaker of the House in modern history. What do we think about Speaker Johnson? You know, it's crazy, and it is true, because this guy came from nowhere. Mm -hmm. There are most people on the House floor that had never heard of him before. They've, this is the first time they've ever heard of his name, and now they're actually learning about who he is, and there's stuff that's coming out about his history and his mm -hmm. past, you know, what he's for, what he's against. But the thing is with the GOP is that they just want someone in that seat that's of their party. Of course. Who's just going to, you know, abide by whatever their party lines are. So put, Iron like, the yeah, ironically enough, like we are in ancient Greece. Like we are in the capital of democracy. This is where democracy started. Wow. You know, it BC That's a big times, statement. You know, which Cow. is which is crazy. Uh huh. You know, so this is where it all started. Um, you know, and homosexuality, you know, was a thing here, you know, something that was practiced by aristocrats. You know, it wasn't something since that the beginning of time. Since the beginning of time. Yeah. You know, so it's just ironic that this is where we are now in 2023 and on the verge of another U.S. presidential election. And this guy is third in line to be the president of the United States. And that's scary. And that's scary. He's third in line. Yeah. I mean, that is just nuts. And of course, he's a white man, yeah. you know, and I mean, it's it, it, again, what scares me the most is what you touched on was the fact that we never heard about this guy. And all of a sudden, he's got the most one of the most important seats, if not, you yeah. know, the third most important seat in the land. And I love when the GOP is like, oh, you know, these Democrats don't have experience, so they don't have this. You know, they gave Kamala Harris such a hard time, you know, when she was running for president. And even now, as vice president, you know, that, oh, we don't have experience. And then all of a sudden, someone comes up from the, you know, Louisiana, and now they're qualified to be Speaker of the House in third line uh, to be President of the United States. Well, and I will say that Speaker Johnson definitely has experience. Experience oh, in no, hate. Oh, no, absolutely. Experience yeah. in hate. That's what he has. What else we got going on, Cal? So next, let's queer up sports. Historic games open in Hong Kong and Guadalajara amid criticisms and concerns. The gay games open this week for the first time in history in two cities, Hong Kong and Guadalajara. For the first time in history, these games are being held in Asia and Latin America. Hong Kong has been criticized because of human rights and abuse of LGBTQ people. The gay games have been an international headline in recent weeks, being for a lawsuit by the International Olympic Committee on trademark infringements what? on the word Olympic. So wait a minute, gay games can't say Olympic. Like you can't say gay Olympics. Right. But wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> mm -hmm. The trade for trademark infringement on the word Olympic was issued because it was decided by the Supreme Court in favor of the International Olympic Committee. 4,000 participants are at the games representing more than 45 countries. It's wow, amazing. This is the first, the, the 41st year of the gay games. Unfortunately, uh, Taiwan is not participating over fear of arrest by the mainland Chinese police. 
The gay games continue through the closing ceremonies on November 11th. The ancient Olympic Games and the 1896 Modern Olympics were actually held here, just 100 miles where we were broadcasting from in Athens. Okay, and I, I, okay, I have the best geography. Hold on. 100 miles that way. No, I don't. That way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got, 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 got. We know you're directionally challenged. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. yeah. But we know where the Acropolis is. I know is. we do. And you see it? It's right there. And it's beautiful. <laughs> So what do you think about the gay games? You know, this is crazy because from the beginning of time, mm -hmm. you know, sports are something that it shouldn't trans it transcends over, you know, gender and sex and race. And it's always a time where countries from around the world come together to celebrate the one thing that everyone loves, which is sports. Sports. You know, so from and the beginning, people. Yeah, especially the swimmers, you know, and, and figure skating. Those are my favorite. Of course they are. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of crazy from the beginning. They didn't want us to participate in those games. So what did we do? We created our own games, right? Mm -hmm. So these games have been going on for, you know, a couple of decades now with hundreds of athletes from around the world and countries that are participating in it. And now all of a sudden we can't use the word Olympic yeah. because of that. So what there's a think? simple solution. Okay. Let us just play in the regular Olympics. You know, just, you know, all of these countries just need to come together. And if it's what we're celebrating is sports, athletes are athletes. I know I'm not the most athletically challenged person. You're you not. You know that? You're not. You I know? told you to throw and something and it weren't like over there. I, yeah, all the way across. Uh -huh. But it's sad that they want to be able to create this division when all these athletes just want to do what they want to do. They want to be able to play the sport they love and represent the country that they love. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting how some people, you know, want to do that when they um when they're from a country that doesn't even respect their human rights yeah. they still want to go and they still want to represent that country as a gay person yeah you know um you know i mean there's another solution spell olympics wrong <laughs> gay, olympics gay olympics with an i you could do that the same it yeah. could happen look i will definitely be watching the closing ceremony a little tart on the eye yes a little rainbow yeah why not i think it'd be cute i'm just saying yeah. I mean, that's not that's not a trademark hey we have ideas I, i'm just saying <laughs> At this thing. All right, next up, let's queer up travel. Since this is what we're doing, oh my goodness, Greece and Athens are at the crossroads for new LGBTQ plus rights. So, a couple of things to let you folks know about, all right? So, ancient, in ancient Athens, all right, where we're at right now, homosexuality was not just tolerated, it was elevated, okay? It was endorsed, it was propaganda, it was you woke up in the morning and said, hey, go be a homosexual. That's how it was, and that's how it's always been, okay? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the movie The Birdcage, you know, with the China, and they had, like, the Greek boys, uh, the China, and, like, yes. she was looking at it like, what is this? You know, <laughs> because he poured the soup into them. So this has been around it for centuries. It has. It has. Athens today celebrates diversity and, expect and acceptance, and it has a vibrant gayborhood of bars, drag shows, and restaurants. Which okay? I can't wait to experience. Listen, so, you know, I've been here for a couple of days already, and yeah. I've been able to go near the gayborhood. So let me tell you, it looks really exciting. Yeah. I can't wait to be there to the wee hours of the morning. Yeah. And we will be. <laughs> and we will be. Now, for my ladies, for my women, okay, the, or the origin of the word lesbian is from the island of... Lesbos! I heard you all saying it with me. Lesbos! Okay, so, which is just 150 miles from Athens, and that's where I'm going right after this. <laughs> that's where all the lesbians are. Anyway, and one of more than 4,000 of the Greek isles. So there's 4,000 wow. individual beautiful isles, and one of them is Lesbos, where the word lesbian comes from. Isn't that awesome? That's like from my big fat Greek wedding. Remember the dad, he's like, tell me any word, and I'll tell you where it comes from from Greek. <laughs> you know, remember that? <laughs> the guy who put Windex on everything? Yeah. Yeah. I, like it. I like it. Everything goes back to Greek. I love them. Yeah. That's today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV? We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. Tune in daily on this historic queer news broadcast of the Eastern Mediterranean and three continents. We will be broadcasting across Greece, Egypt, Cyprus, Turkey, and the Greek Isles. No queer news show has ever been done like this ever before. And that is exactly what Queer News Tonight is all about. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. 
To our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you good night.